Okay, it is time to create our first operation in this project and it will be very easy. So in order to create an operation, I need to choose the machining tab and click here on the new operation. I'm using mostly the drop down menu. So I press this little arrow down and I will choose 3D entry face milling. Okay, that's the face milling operation. Which will, which will be the first one in our project. So first of all, I need to adjust the tool. In order to do this, I double click on the tool name on the operation line, that's it. And I can see the tool table. So here in the bottom, this tool table editing um, area can be turned off or on. Here on the left, we have different toolkits. I will choose uh, some uh, my, my, I will not use any toolkit, I will create my own and show you how to do this in SpritCam. So, in order to create a tool, I need to press this uh, button. So, I will choose Project Tools, so the tools which I used in the current project, and add Mill Tool. Here is the default uh, Mill Tool created, and so now I will adjust it, change it type to Torus Mill, diameter to 60 length to i don't know let's take also 60 uh working length to 9 uh, by the way i can also edit like this and by the way here i can see the size of the tool compared to the part which is handy yeah okay uh shoulder length let's make it 30 i will show you what is it doing shank diameter 30 that's it. So shoulder length, I will make it a little shorter. Let's check. Something like this. And I will use this little angle like this. And also I will use this radius and set it to one millimeter. That's it. That is look. That looks like some um, face mill. So I will decrease a little bit this radius that's it so next i will uh, add some holder to the tool so in order to do that that i switch to holder tab here and here we have some holders which are available by default but here we also have much more holders you can choose them and check them so but i will use some standard one default one which is used here uh, not this one but okay let's see let's say this one will be fine okay and the last thing i want to do here is to press select tool for the operation button in order to create and apply all the changes which i've made earlier nice here is the tool it looks like this and now I'm ready for the toolpath calculation. So I press this run button. And what I see now is the toolpath which is calculated. Okay, now it's time to talk a little bit about these visibility buttons. They are very important. And uh, when you're just starting to explore SprutCam, there can be some confusion here. So I will describe you what are they doing. So obviously, this one is responsible for tool toolpath visibility. So you can see the toolpath, the machine visibility, the fixture visibility, the tool visibility, the holder visibility, and machining result visibility. What is very and uh, workplace visibility? We will stop now and talk about these ones a little bit later. So you can see now we have two objects which are semi transparent besides the part itself so this one is the initial workpiece and this one the orange one is the machining result so i can turn off for example workpiece visibility and see only the machining result in SprutCam, every operation is using the result of a previous one and the workpiece for the car for for every operation is different 
because the workpiece for the operation is the machining result of the previous operation. So you can see if I turn on workpiece visibility, I can see my initial workpiece because it's the very first operation in the project. Uh, usually I don't use this and I turn it off. Much more interesting is the machining result visibility. Now I can see the machining result visibility with a semi-transparent and this is the mode I'm working most of the time in. But sometimes I also switch these uh, buttons. For example, I can turn off the machine visibility to make it um, more convenient to work with uh, machining technology in the machining tab. Okay. Important thing is that when you turn off the machine, machine visibility, nothing changes in the toolpath. So you can see here is the tool change point. So it still is here in the toolpath. If I reset and recalculate, that's it. It's only the visibility of the machine and does not influence the toolpath. Okay. And one more important thing is that in SprutCam, after the toolpath is calculated, SprutCam is performing a quick simulation in the background and you can see this uh, status icon um, every operation has it and when you have when you see this check mark that means that the toolpath is calculated and the background simulation is performed and no collisions are found if i reset uh, the operation press this reset current operation button i can see that uh, the icon changed and this means that the toolpath is not calculated. So when I press run, you will see that first it will look like a, a paper, a list of paper uh, with some uh, lines on it, which means the toolpath is calculated. And after that, it will be a check mark, which means the toolpath is calculated and the simulation in the background is performed. That's it. Okay. Um, next, we will go to simulation and check and watch the movie. So in order to see the smooth simulation, you need to switch to simulation tab. So here we have workpiece by default. By the way, the visibility here is set. Um, sorry, let's go back to machining. And I promised you to tell you about these buttons. So what are they doing? Job assignment visibility is something which is showing us the job assignment or feature or job geometry or machining area. It's called different in different CAD CAM software. I will talk about it a little bit later. And to these buttons which are uh, turning on and off full geometry model visibility and part visibility. I recommend to turn them on both when you are working with a milling project. Sometimes it's different when you are working with a turning project or a mill turn project. So for a milling project, turn them both on. That's it. So go back to simulation. You can see that it's some different, something different. So what is, what is shown here is what is interesting is the machining result first of all i don't need the workpiece here because the workpiece is changing and then i don't want to look at the workpiece while the the uh, the simulation is performed i would like to look at the machining result so and all other uh, icons are and all the icons are working the same way so i can turn on the visibility of everything what is changed is here on the left you can see that here on the left on the machining tab we have completely different uh, buttons and interface what's here is shown is that on the top there is some toolbar for simulation management or simulation handling here we have some status uh, checks like stop on error for for example if we have errors if also we have errors we can step not by the uh, frame of the control program but switch between the errors in order to fix them them uh, easily and quickly okay here we have this uh, bar which is 
uh, which is changing the simulation speed. That's it. And here on top, we have some important buttons. Obviously, we have run, step backward, step forward for a step by step simulation, stop and reset. This is very important reset workpiece. If you have something or you have simulated something before that, you need to click this one. Reset workpiece. Now the workpiece is reset and we'll show you a little bit later how it works. And I just press run. Okay, that's it. That is the simulation. So if I can turn off the machine visibility and run it one more time. If I want to run it from the beginning, I press this reset workpiece and decrease the speed a little bit and press run. Let's check how it works. Okay, nice. I will change the machining strategy. You can see now it's some uh, some strategies, some mach machining strategy strategies applied here. So I ch change to machining tab, and here uh, on the left I have lots and lots of tabs. I will show you the most important ones, uh, and now I will switch to the strategy tab. Please make sure that you have selected the operation, which is face milling currently, and strategy. So here. Uh, we have a question mark, you can see the hints. And uh, here in, on the strategy option, we have different options for strategy. So I will use uh, zigzag right now. Close this window. Here I can use this arrow to change the machining direction interactively, which is a lot of users of Sprutcam find very useful. Uh, currently I will set it to zero and what I will do is to make a finishing pass. In order to make a finishing pass here I have cleanup height which is turned on and I will print 0 0.5 millimeters which will be my finish pass. Now you can see that number of passes is two for this operation and if I press run I can see that the toolpath is different so the strategy is different now and I have a finish pass here. So let's go to simulation one more time. You can see that the workpiece is already simulated. So I press reset and run. First pass and second pass. That's it. And the last thing I wanna show you is this uh, verify tool, which if I push this, I can see here here is the stock shown with a color and we can see that we have made a face milling which is almost or not almost which is touching the part here in this area which is very handy tool i use it a lot of time okay and now we will go to the next operation which will be roughing waterline <laughs> 